In this video, I'm going to be reading the remake of the original Jeff the Killer story. In my opinion, this is far superior, it's just more realistic. But if you want to hear the original, it's on my channel already, so you can go check out that. It's a really long story, so I've decided to break it up into three parts. If you want to see part two next week, make sure to like the video and subscribe. Jeff the Killer, part one. The day Jeffrey Woods and his family arrived at their new home, the sky was overcast and the weather was muggy. The grey skies seemed to punctuate his mood. Jeff was not thrilled to be here. Their new home was beautiful though, a true example of his father's newfound success, but still, it wasn't the home he'd known. A week after they'd settled in, Jeff and Lou woke up early. The sky was a crisp and gorgeous blue, and although the Louisiana heat was playing its usual cruel tricks, the brothers decided that a morning bike ride to explore the area would be just the right ticket to combat the slight pangs of homesickness that they'd both been experiencing over the last week. I miss home, Lou blurted out, as Jeff was smearing salsa on the microwaved burrito that would serve as his breakfast. Me too, Lou, but I guess this is home now, so we just have to sort of make the most of it. I know, but all of our friends and stuff are back in New Orleans. Remember that building we'd always sneak up on top of and watch the city lights come on? I miss that, Lou responded, sounding down. Yeah, and ZM Video. The owner knew us and would always let us rent R-rated movies without our parents. And he'd always hook us up with a free video game rental if we got a few movies. Yeah, I miss that too, Lou. But we have to. Lou interrupted. I know we have to make the most of this. But still, this place seems so fake. And mum and dad still treat us like we aren't even here. Yeah, they do. I was sort of hoping the new house would improve their mood. But what can we do? Lou had no answer. Jeff finished his breakfast and the two boys left the house to mount their bikes and explore a bit more. As it turned out, the subdivision they moved into was rather close to a cluster of stores in a small shopping centre. Village Shopping Centre was the name of the short row of businesses. Within these was a pizza hut, a Chinese restaurant, a tobacco store, a sprint store, and what Jeff and Lou were most excited about, a video store. We'll have to get mum or dad to come down here and open up an account so we can rent some movies, Lou mentioned as Jeff flipped a box over to read the description of a horror movie. Shit, you're right, Jeff snapped, feeling a bit frustrated at this thought. He knew getting his parents to actually come down here and set up a membership would take forever, since their usual after-work routine was to go off into separate rooms until they both got hungry enough to come out and speak. Jeff glanced over at the girl working behind the counter. Maybe I can go over there and sweet-talk her into giving us accounts, he joked. Yeah, right, Jeff. One look at you and she'd probably ban us, Lou remarked back, a smile broad on his face. You doubt me, little man? Doubt you? The guy who's kissed two girls and almost touched a boob? Never. Please go over and lay on all the charm. Whatever. I totally could have banged that girl. But her parents came home and... Last time you told me that story, you said her parents were out of town and her sister came home. Jeff became flustered, and while in the process of trying to make yet another comeback, the girl behind the register removed all doubt by speaking to the boys herself. Hey, aren't those your bikes? The young woman asked, pointing towards the glass window. 
Jeff and Lou looked over and saw three boys outside, two of which were riding around in circles on the Woods Brothers' bikes. They would spin them around and then jump off, letting the bikes crash into the pavement, just to stand them up and ride them again. The two boys riding the bikes were both slim in build, while the heavier boy stood on the sidewalk, drinking a Red Bull and watching. Jeff and his brother made their way towards the doors of the video store when the fat kid saw them coming. Jeff couldn't hear what he said to his two friends, but he made some sort of gesture while shouting, and the other two boys dumped the bikes where they lay and walked towards the sidewalk, directly towards the two brothers. Those your bikes? One of the boys asked, as Jeff and Lou entered the summer heat. Yeah, and why are you riding them? Lou asked sharply. We just saw them there, man. Relax. Figured someone had left them out here for us. The same boy responded, as his two friends joined him on either side. Jeff, determined to make a good start here, tried to change the course of this confrontation. Well, they're ours. We just moved here about a week ago. We live over on Fairmont Avenue, a few blocks from here. We were just checking out the neighbourhood. Jeff hoped that a civil tone could turn things around, but he could tell from the insolent look on the kid's face that this was a difficult gamble. Good for you, you move somewhere, the fat kid remarked. Oh yeah, Troy, the first boy spoke. They moved into that piece of shit house with the gravel driveway. I was wondering who was going to move into that place. Well, Randy, we know now, the big kid, apparently named Troy, replied. Jeff, still trying to salvage the conversation, tried peaceful banter one more time. Okay, so you're Troy, and you're Randy. Well, I'm Jeff, and this is my brother Lou. We just moved over here from New Orleans. You ain't in New Orleans now. The third boy, who just now decided to speak, remarked. Yeah, and who the hell said you could call us by our names? Randy asked, that insolent, privileged smile never leaving his face. Jeff smiled and responded to Randy. Well, I guess I should have just called you an asshole, but I figured I would give you the benefit of the doubt. In that moment... A flare of rage replaced the smirk that had rested on Randy's face throughout the entire exchange. The other two boys, Troy and the still unknown third member of this band, seemed to be momentarily struck silent. Perhaps they weren't used to being stood up to. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that language too adult for you? Jeff asked. And you, quiet boy. We know this isn't New Orleans, Jeff stated to the slim kid that had reminded him of his geographical locations. Because if this was New Orleans, you three would have already gotten your asses kicked for touching someone else's shit. The slim kid looked back and forth at his two friends. However, Randy, clearly the leader, seemed to know what to say. Keith. You gonna let this little shit talk to you like that? Jeff knew this part, and while he wanted quite badly to sock Randy and his pals around, a real concern suddenly invaded his mind. If he and Lou got into a fight on their first week in their new neighbourhood, their parents would freak. He could practically hear it now, and while things had been far from perfect in their home, even after the move, There was a peace that had fallen over the family, and Jeff, fighting his urges, decided to do his best to keep it. Jeff looked over at the three very well-dressed, very privileged-looking suburban kids before them, and dismissed them. You guys are boring. Come on, Lou. Let them continue their playdates without us. Lou laughed at that and followed behind his brother towards the bikes. However, Randy and his little gang of would-be toughs would have none of that, 
they moved to block Jeff and his brother once again. Where you going, pussy? Randy asked, shoving Jeff. Jeff could tell that that shove had no real conviction. Randy was trying to figure him out, seeing where his buttons were. He'd push harder eventually, but Jeff swallowed the slowly building anger within him once more. Lou took a bit more exception to the shove. We're going to your mum's house. Me and my brother saved up a couple of dollars from doing chores, and we hear she doesn't charge much. As the words left Lou's mouth, Randy appeared to only register a small portion of it all. Randy Hayden had grown up in Mandeville. His father was a partner at a local firm and made a lot of money. Something else that Jeff would soon come to learn. Randy and his friends, while the same age as Jeff, had grown up in very different circumstances. They were used to being feared. In fact, Randy, the target of the insult, just stood there. It was actually Troy, the fat kid, who stepped forward, fist balled, eyes squinting in anger. Who you talking to? Troy shouted, and took a swing at Lou. Lou, who was both in better shape and had sparred with Jeff a time or two during his time spent boxing, was able to avoid the punch, but just barely. Had that been all, it may have once again ended there. Troy was clearly taken by surprise at Lou's speed, and actually didn't attempt another punch. However, these were bullies, kids that ran in a pack for a reason. The skinny one, Keith, stepped around and threw a punch that connected with the left side of Lou's face. Jeff had seen enough. He'd been shocked at how quickly this evolved into blows, even though he'd expected it from almost the start. When he'd first met Randy and his friends, he'd been curious. From there, he'd developed an annoyance with them. And slowly that annoyance had evolved into anger. However, upon seeing Lou get punched, seeing the small trickle of blood form on his brother's lower lip, upon seeing the smug look of satisfaction on Keith's face, that anger that Jeff had felt suddenly exploded into a rage that he'd never felt before in his life. Jeff Woods did not hesitate. He stepped forward, his feet automatically falling into the correct stance that he'd learned from the boxing glasses his father once enrolled him into, and delivered a powerful right hand to Keith's face. The skinny boy had no time to register shock or pain, the punch caught him by surprise, and his knees buckled. Keith went down to the ground in a heap of confusion and dawning fear. Randy, the so-called leader here, was almost too shocked to move. He'd had quite a lot of experience starting fights, but no real time logged in losing them. He'd never felt control of a situation slip. He was used to being in charge. So now, seeing one of his friends go down so quickly and easily left him in a state of shock that he had no idea how to address. Troy, on the other hand, seemed to have a plan. Throw another punch. He moved towards Jeff, deceptively faster than his weight would seem to allow, and threw two equally fast punches. Jeff, however had no problem sidestepping both attempts. Troy, seeming lost for actions, actually dropped his arms, as if to say, Gee, what do I do now? Jeff had the answer. He moved in, throwing three hooks to Troy's stomach. The hefty kid's eyes went as wide as pie pans. A fitting analogy, Jeff thought. He staggered back, clutching his throbbing stomach. Jeff wasted no time and stepped in once more, fetching a sharp punch to the big kid's jaw 
causing Troy to promptly fall onto his ass. Jeff was reminded of King Hippo from the punch-out game he used to play. He couldn't help but smile. Jeff now turned his focus on Randy. He advanced on the boy, feeling something new forming inside of him. He still felt the anger, the rage, actually, at the antics of these three assholes. They had the nerve to mess with their bikes, the nerve to insult the two kids they'd never met before, and of course, the ultimate offence, touching his brother. However, mixed in with this rage was also a sweet, enjoyable pleasure. Not only was he kicking their asses, but he was loving every second of it. It was as though the joy of showing them up was perfectly blending with the rage he felt towards them. Together, it formed into a sadistic, controlled sense of power. That was, until Lou stepped in front of him. Jeff, stop. That's enough. Why stop now, Lou? They wanted this. Jeff replied in a flat voice that Lou had never heard come from his brother's mouth. She's calling the cops. Look. Lou shouted again, and this time, Jeff came back to reality long enough to listen. He glanced over at the video store clerk and saw her on the phone, talking frantically and pointing towards the parking lot. Suddenly, Jeff's strange sadistic haze collapsed, and he regained his former self. Shit, let's go, he stated quickly, and he and Lou mounted their bikes and rode towards the parking lot exit. Yeah, you better run, Randy called from behind them. Jeff and Lou paid no mind and pedalled away. A few blocks down the street, they dismounted their bikes and began to walk them together. At first, neither brother spoke. Then Lou broke the silence. Jeff, thank you for standing up for me back there. Thank you. Yeah, those guys were pieces of shit. They had it coming, Jeff replied, looking down at the street as they walked. What? What happened? I've never seen you like that before. Just defending myself, Lou. What was I supposed to do? Let them beat you up? I bet they go to our school. I bet we'll see them there. And they won't forget this. Who cares? We didn't ask to move here. We didn't ask for any of this. Mum and Dad just wanted a bigger house in a nicer neighbourhood. And we were along for the ride, whether we liked it or not. Think I give a shit what these rich asshole kids think of us? Jeff stated, and went back to looking at his feet. Think we'll get in trouble? Lou asked. For what? Defending ourselves? Yeah, I guess you're right. They did start it. Lou answered. And to the brothers, the matter was closed. However, things were far from over. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you're enjoying the story so far. I'm working on part two currently, and that should be done by next week. So make sure to subscribe to see more content from me and ensure you don't miss any future uploads. As always, thank you so much for supporting my videos and my artwork. I love sharing it with you guys and I really appreciate that so many people want to see what I create. But that's it for this video and I will catch you guys next week in the next drawing video. I'll see you then.